For the second time in the Shanahan era, the San Francisco 49ers are the NFC West champs. They beat 21-13 the Seattle Seahawks with Sturdy Purdy once again at the helm. His first ever away win in the NFL. Welcome to 49ers postgame live brought to you by Toyota, Dante Whitner, Rod Brooks, Carlos Ramirez. Hat size? Uh, seven and three quarters. Are you? It's medium. <laughs> Uh, I'm a large. <laughs> so the 49ers have their NFC West champs hats and shirts. What a game. Uh, defensively, man, this team is absolutely lethal. Everything they do flows through that defense. And to see those guys go to Seattle and, and show that's, that's, that city what a real defense looks like nowadays, championship quality. And look at the NFC West standings. That's a wrap. That's a clinch. The 49ers undefeated in the division one game away against Arizona that's going to be the final game of the season to lock it up and just make it 6-0 but for whatever uh, for that standing Dante that's a clinch and now you focus on catching the Vikings yeah that's the absolute focus right now you want to get that number two seed so that you don't have just one game at home playoff games you have two playoff games at home so shout out to the entire defense the mm -hmm. offense started slow today they couldn't really get it going on the ground through the air. The defense held them in it early, and when the offense started to put points on the board, defense closed it out in the second half. Let's go out to Seattle. Lumen Field talk with our 49ers insider, Matt Mayoko. Matt, you've covered this team a lot. You've seen a lot of games in Seattle. This win felt different for the 49ers. Um, what's your overall take on this game? Yeah, I, I just thought that the 49ers were so clearly the better team and you know a 21 to 13 victory for them of course they're going to take that uh, but it could have been a lot worse and it could have been a lot worse if not for a kind of bogus roughing the passer call on Nick Bosa that wiped out a pick six for Diamondor Lenore but the 49ers you know didn't do enough to really uh, push that lead out and make it a comfortable final few minutes. They had to run out the final 315 and they turned to Jordan Mason. You know, this was the Christian McCaffrey show for most of this game. They really relied on him. But when they needed those tough yards, they went to the young guy, Jordan Mason. So the rookies really came through. Mason kind of helping the 49ers run it out. He probably should have gotten down in bounds at the end of the game. But, you know, I'm sure that's something that the, uh, the coaching staff doesn't mind too much at the end of that 55 yard run. But I just heard you call him, Carlos, uh, Sturdy Purdy. And that is a great description because he just looks in control. He had one pass that he probably wanted back that should have been an interception. But overall, he just made all the plays he had to make. And the 49ers are rolling into the playoffs with Brock Purdy leading the way. You're talking about Sturdy Purdy. 217 yards, 17 for 26, two touchdowns, no interceptions. I mean, we talked on pregame live. He's going to go from folk hero to superhero, Matt. Is he officially a 49er superhero? I mean, think about the last four days he's had. He, he, he goes out there against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, rolls up a 35 to nothing lead on Tom Brady and that team, and he wins that game, becoming the first rookie quarterback to ever win a first start against Tom Brady. And then what does he do in his second NFL start? He brings home the division title. And right now, I'm standing outside the 49ers locker room, and the 49ers are coming back into the locker room from the field. There are a lot of 49ers fans here you know not like SoFi or not like Mexico City but I can tell you one thing they are being very loud as they are congratulating their team uh, for this division clinching victory here in Seattle it doesn't come often these wins in Seattle for the 49ers but when they do they matter in the NFC West titles in 2019 and again here in 2022 all right Matt tell me where you want to go with the overreaction we've got Brock Purdy's in UQB1 we've got this team doesn't it Debo to go deep into the playoffs we've got this is the best defense on the planet where do you want to go with the overreaction you take the lead well yeah let's let's look ahead a season I know the Friars still have a lot of football to play this year but boy oh boy doesn't Brock Purdy look like the starting NFL quarterback? And doesn't he look like a guy who fits so well in the Kyle Shanahan system? Using his legs to pick up that key first down late in the game, that double fake 
pass, pump fake to Ray Ray McLeod, pump fake to Christian McCaffrey, hit George Kittle. It just looks like he is doing everything that Kyle Shanahan wants him to do. And at this point, you know, if you'd asked me a few days ago, I would have said no way. But I really think right now, based on what we've seen through three games, basically, of Brock Purdy, he might be turning into the front runner to be this team's starting quarterback next year because they have to go with whoever wins that competition. And Brock Purdy is gaining valuable, valuable experience in big time games for this team. Sturdy Purdy, Sturdy Mayoko. As all, it doesn't rhyme, but it is true, though. <laughs> we'll see you later on the podcast, Matt. Thanks a lot from Seattle. Let's compare quarterbacks here. Geno Smith was the story, not anymore. It's Sturdy Purdy, 17 of 26, 217 yards. Another non interception game, two touchdowns, 117 rating. Is he the future of the 49ers at quarterback?